morning. It's Sunday. It's a wonderful day to worship the Lord. We're so glad you're with us too as we connect with God and with one another online. We know there's a lot of things on Facebook. There's a lot of things uh, online, a lot of distractions, a lot of things you could be doing right now. But we're so glad that you have prioritized, you have made space to connect with God and your Grove Church family. So if this is your first time, welcome. Write new in the comments. We're so glad you're here. If you're one of the folks who've been here forever, welcome. We're so glad you're here with us as we celebrate Jesus and we talk about God's faithfulness. Uh, we've been looking at the Apostles' Creed. It's a basic summary of Christian doctrine uh, that's that's like, like 1,500 years old, older than that actually. And uh, we're, we've been looking at it every week. Today we're gonna look at I believe in the Holy Spirit and learn more about it. Who is the Holy Spirit and why does that matter? So we're so glad you're here. But before we jump into that, what we do is we have a call to worship, which is an invitation to worship God. It's a call away from our minds being occupied with whatever you had for breakfast this morning and, and the kids running around and the challenges of the day, an invitation to worship our living God. After that, we have a call to confession, which is a time I'm gonna pray a lot of prayer and we connect and confess our sins, connect and confess our need for God in this challenging time that we find ourselves in. And we'll continue and have a special message for the kids. Uh, of course, we'll also have a time of worshiping God with singing. And also, uh, a, we're going to dig into the Bible and learn more about the Holy Spirit and a time to respond in generosity. So thank you so much for coming, for joining us uh, this morning. This is our call to worship. It's from Acts chapter 2. God will pour out the Spirit on all flesh, and our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Our old ones shall dream dreams, and our young ones shall see visions. And all who come upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Come, let us call upon the name of the Lord together today. And now we have a time of confession, of confessing our sins before God. I'm going to pray a lot of prayer and just ask that you use this time to meditate and connect with God. And if there's anything that that pops up and strikes within you, just speak to God, either silently or, you know, aloud as I pray. Let us pray together. Generous God, you send us the spirit of courage, but we've been afraid. You send us the spirit of truth, but we cling to our illusions. You send us the spirit of healing, but we cannot let go of our hurts. Holy Spirit of forgiveness, come to us again. Shake our hearts. Set our souls on fire with your love. Send us out into the world rejoicing in your power. We hold out to you all our particular burdens of guilt and sin. And we ask for your help to live the way of your justice and your love. Amen. Amen. As God has forgiven us from those sins, there's a promise that he forgives us and welcomes us and cleans our slate. Hear these words from Romans 8. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. And if the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, God who raised Christ from the dead will also give us life to our mortal bodies through the Spirit who lives in us. Thanks be to God. As God has given us peace through Christ, through forgiving us, through welcoming us as his children, so let us share that joy in a peaceful greeting to one another. Let's pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us spend some time online in the comments. Greet each other with signs of Christ's peace. Hi, thank you for coming. Peace be with you. Welcome. Thank you, guys. May the peace of Christ be with you. God's peace be with you as well. Hey, kids. I'm so glad we're, you're with me. Are you done school yet? Is it your last day? Are you on summer vacation? I hope you're having a lot of fun with your family. Uh, so I want to tell you about something. I haven't, uh, I go to school sometimes too, and I go to school far away. I haven't gone for a while, but for me to go to school, I have to take a plane to go there. And uh, there's been one or two times I go, I take a plane, I take a suitcase with all my clothes, and when I get, to the place I'm staying, the hotel or the house where I'm staying, I open my suitcase and sometimes I get surprised. I get little notes from my kids. Little, uh, sometimes little messages, sometimes little chocolate treats, sometimes drawings. 
Have you ever sent your mom or dad or grandma little messages to say, hey, I'm thinking of you, hey, I miss you? Maybe you've done that. So my kids do that and it's such a great surprise and it's something I hang it up in my mirror wherever I am as a reminder that my kids love me and they're with me. Uh, one of the things that uh, are in our Bible passage today, it's starting to rain a little bit, uh, one of the things in our Bible passage today is that Jesus, as he goes up to heaven like we talked about last week, he leaves something with his followers. He leaves not a note, he does leave the Bible, but not, he leaves something even more amazing. What could be more amazing than that? He leaves the Holy Spirit, who is just like him. The Holy Spirit who lives in the heart. So when we become forever friends with Jesus, we have the Spirit that is with us always. That's what Jesus tells his disciples in John chapter 14. He says, I'm with you always. I'm sending the Father who sent me is sending someone else that is just like me, the Holy Spirit. So we can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know that when we're friends with Jesus, the Holy Spirit is with us. He's always with us. So it's not like a, it's like a little note, but it's not. It's a little note that God puts in our hearts and says, you know what, I am with you. I'm living in your heart. I'm your friend forever. I will never leave you alone. I am always with you. You have me. You have the Holy Spirit. Isn't that a great gift that God gave us, His Spirit? Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you're with these kids, that they know that they're not alone, Lord, that you are their forever friend, and you walk with them. You're always there with them, and that you're there to listen to them, to help them, to guide them into your truth. And Help them to live a life that you've called them to live. Thank you, God, for these kids, for their families, Lord. We pray for this summer that's going to be a little bit different. We pray that you give them peace and be with their parents and their families to shepherd them to this time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, kids. Uh, miss you. Hope you're having a great start to the beginning of summer. Wish I could give you a high five. Take an air high five from here. But uh, we're so glad you're here. You're going to be learning more about the Holy Spirit in your kids' packets. Uh, but before that, let us worship God in singing. Joel and Carla will sing us, will lead us in song, and there's words on the screen so we could sing to God as we worship, as we thank God for the gift of His Spirit. Greetings, Grove Church. We are so happy to be here with you today. We're going to sing about God's amazing grace. This is called Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Like 
reading from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 27. If you love me and keep my commands, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of the truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to my Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nicole, for reading our scripture today. Let us pray. God, we trust in your spirit. We pray that your spirit guide us, that your spirit open our eyes, that we be aware of you and your leading and your guiding as we spend this time together, Lord, but also as we continue walking our days. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As I said earlier, we've been looking at the Apostles' Creed, and today we continue that journey. But before we dive in, I have an odd question to ask you. What has been your best purchase of 2020, right? This year is not how we planned, so some purchases might be useless, and some purchases might have more value. I really want to know, what has been the most useful purchase in year 2020? Well, for me, it has been uh, some new L.L. Bean moccasin slippers. I purchased them in January. Actually, it was kind of a debate because I was not sure if I should splurge and get another pair. You see, I had a pair that was given to me as a gift years earlier, and I liked them so much, I wore them out. Uh, but I said, hey, you know what? I had some Christmas uh, money there and purchased these moccasin slippers, you know, the furry kind in the, with the fur inside. And what has been amazing about it is I, I assumed I just wear it for a couple, day, a couple hours a week. And because of the stay-at-home order, I've been at home a lot more often and my, my slippers have been part of my daily wardrobe, like where I'm now uh, 12 hours a day. I knew they were amazing because I had another pair earlier, but I just didn't know I would use them as much as I did. Well, in John 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he tells them that he'll give them another advocate, that the Father will send another advocate. The Gospels, as you know, were originally written in Greek and the word for another is alos. Actually, there's a couple words for another, but the word in the Gospel of John is alos, which means another just like the same. So I could have said, you know, before I could have said, I got those L.L. Bean slippers and there were aloe slippers. They were another just like the same ones I had earlier. They weren't a cheaper brand. They weren't a fake imitation. They were the same, just like the ones before. So John 14 records and says, Jesus is saying that his father is going to send another, just like he sent him, another of the same. So the disciples who loved, trusted Jesus, the disciples who, who were sustained by Jesus' presence, they have another advocate, another helper coming, just like the same, so they can trust, love, and be sustained by the Holy Spirit, just as they were by Jesus Christ in the flesh. Another, alos, 
just like the same. The Holy Spirit is the same substance of God the Father and Jesus the Son. That's that Trinity concept that sometimes we have trouble understanding, right? One of the more challenging concepts of Christianity and things that our Muslim friends and our Jewish friends uh, can't understand or accept. But the Holy Spirit is a different person, not an inferior substitute. It's the same God, equal. Three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one God. Last week, we, you know, this Apostles' Creed starts with the Father, then the Son, and now the Holy Spirit, right? Last week, we talked about the Father ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And also, we talked today about the Son and the Spirit. Christians have the same presence, the same presence they had before, just like Jesus. So it's important for us not to be ignorant of the Holy Spirit, right? It's important for us to be aware of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is God. Imagine if Jesus was walking around today and we kind of paid a little attention to God the Father and we're distracted about all our day-to-day -day activities and totally were ignorant and uh, forgot about Jesus walking around us. That would be crazy, right? But in some ways, that's what we do today to the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge God in heaven, seems a little distant, and we're distracted by the everyday things around us, and we're sometimes oblivious to the work of the Holy Spirit, another advocate, another helper that is here with us. The Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Often we trust in people's recommendations on cafes to visit or opinions on cell phones to purchase. But here we have the, the recommendation of Jesus. He says in verse 16 and 17 and, and continues in 26, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. 26 continues. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. What a glowing recommendation of the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Christians, we need God's Spirit to live the Christian life. We need the Spirit to teach us to teach us as we read scriptures, right? The same spirit who inspired the Bible is the one who speaks to us today. We have great Bible teachers, right? On YouTube, you can find hundreds of them. But it's really the spirit of God who opens our eyes and helps us to understand the word of God. In this age of information and misinformation and confusion, more than ever, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to guide us, help us to, to speak truth, and help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. We can't live the Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why it comes part and parcel, right? When we have that new life that Jesus promises, the Holy Spirit is, right, is part of it right from the beginning because we can't do it on our own strength. It's God's Spirit who opens our eyes and gives us the faith to believe. It's God's Spirit who gives us the energy and the ability to do what the Word says, to live the life of God. When we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, we're believing that God's Spirit will be with us forever and live in us, always. Jesus said in this John chapter 14 that He will not leave us as orphans. As an 18-year-old believer and an 80-year-old believer, you know what? They both have the same Holy Spirit living in them. Neither is left alone. No follower of Jesus is abandoned. This is amazing. That when we began our Christian life, you may have not known much about the Bible. Actually, you could start your Christian walk today. And that same powerful spirit that hovered over the waters uh, in Genesis chapter 1 during creation. That same spirit who guided Jesus who emboldened the disciples to be witnesses to all the nations, is with us. Right? When we respond to that good news of Jesus that he died on the cross for our sins, 
when we turn our lives to trust on him, that Holy Spirit is part and parcel with the Christian life. He doesn't leave us alone to figure it out. He will always be with us, our advocate and our helper. So when we read in the Bible, and you read about the amazing things the apostles did, you read about the growth of the church and how believers were added to their number each day, how people responded to the gospel, and people were healed and helped and loved, that was done with the same Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that we talk about today, the same Holy Spirit that you as a Christian have full access to. We believe in the Holy Spirit. What, what I find a little ridiculous, honestly, is that while Jesus says he will not leave us alone as orphans, I believe that wholeheartedly, but we somehow abandon the, Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit. What I mean by that is that God is with us. And even though we have the Holy Spirit with us, we look for other places, other roles, other people to do the Spirit's work in our lives. We look for other places for teaching, for wisdom, for guidance, for help. Believer, you have the Holy Spirit in you and you look outside for strength and guidance, counsel and comfort. Where do you go? Where do you go? Go to the Advocate. Go to the Holy Spirit, the same God, the Father who sent the Son, who sent Jesus, sends us the Holy Spirit. And somehow we're not satisfied enough and we look for other places, other people, other things to fill that role. And Jesus predicted that the, the challenges that the Holy Spirit would have. Jesus said in John chapter 14, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. Right? Some people substitute the work of the Holy Spirit with Mary, the mother of Jesus. In our, in our Apostles' Creed, Convention, we believe that Jesus was born in the, of the Virgin Mary. And right? we believe that. We respect her part in the story. But the role she's erroneously given is the place of the Spirit. Our advocate is not the Virgin Mary. Our advocate is not the amazing books that we have. It's not the good luck charms or talismans or things of comfort that we hold. It's not prophets or saints or pastors. They're poor substitutes for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When we put these people or these things in the places of the Spirit of Truth, we do God a disservice. We do ourselves a disservice. We may be even practicing idolatry. God has given himself, his spirit, his children. But the world keeps on looking somewhere else, looks at something else to do his work. So Jesus continues and says, after acknowledging the rejection of the spirit by others, Jesus said, you know him for the Holy Spirit lives with you and will be in you. God has not left us alone. He's not left us as children without caretakers. But we often underplay the role of the Holy Spirit has in our life, the role of the advocate, of the helper. If you're not a believer this morning, I want, to, I, I want you to know that you have the opportunity to have God dwell within your life. You have the opportunity to walk with this amazing God wherever you go. You could ask God to forgive your sins because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. You could ask God to welcome the Holy Spirit into your life. And don't go living your life back into autopilot, but live a life dependent on the work of the Holy Spirit. So this is how it works out. Before you, you go and before you crack open your Bible, open your Bible app to read, we pray. We pray and ask that spirit to open our eyes, to teach us what we should learn. Before we get out of bed in the morning, we ask God to, to make us sensitive to the nudges he has prepared for us in the Holy Spirit. Before you say yes to that job, before you go on that date Friday night, before you find a new apartment, seek the Holy Spirit. And when that Spirit nudges you to act more like Jesus, follow that lead. Be obedient to the Spirit. 
When God leads you to give your time or your resources to others, when God leads you to give to do that, give generously. When the third person of the Trinity brings a person to mind, pray for her. When the Spirit of Truth emboldens you to share the gospel, give a reason for the hope that you have. And when the Spirit nudges you to be silent, close your mouth and listen. Christ followers, the Spirit of God is in you. Not a lesser version of the Spirit. Not a watered down, not a fake, not an imitation. The Holy Spirit. Alos, Paracletos, another counselor, another advocate, just like the same. And we know that life is busy, life is robust, things are crazy. There's other influences in your life. So we have to constantly tune our ears to the Spirit. We have to constantly be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's work. Submit your lives to the Holy Spirit. Submit your plans to His leading. Surrender your time before God and reading the Bible and prayer and worship. Say, I'm going to spend some time with God, listening to God. I'm going to spend some, God, some time obeying what the Spirit tells me. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe that he's here now on your couch, in your home, in your family. Right? If you're a believer, the Holy Spirit is there with you. And he helps you to follow God, to live, and to love like Jesus. Don't accept any substitutes. Believe in the Holy Spirit, our advocate and our helper. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your powerful spirit. We thank you, God, that you have not left us alone. You have not left us as orphaned. You have not abandoned us. Your spirit is with us. Your spirit empowers us to follow you. Lord, we pray for our friends that are watching, Lord, that are uh, having committed to the ways of Jesus. We pray that that same spirit open their eyes, show them how much they are loved, how much God wants to work in their life and to lead them. May they open themselves up, Lord. May they turn away from living life on their own terms and open themselves up to you leading and guiding their lives as Lord and Savior. And God, we lift up those who are sick. God, we pray for Nicole, that you may heal her from her surgery, Lord. We pray for Seal in the hospital, that you bring recovery to her body, oh Lord. Lord, we pray for Luke, uh, Lord, who is uh, struck with cancer, Lord. We pray for peace for his family and healing and wholeness for him, Lord. Lord, we pray those other needs of those who are struggling with sickness, Lord, that we pray they bring wholeness and restoration. God, we pray for those who have lost jobs, Lord, even uh, that continue to find out bad news about employment. Lord, we know that you are our provider, that uh, our hope comes from you, our provision uh, comes from you, Lord. So we pray that you provide for them, Lord, and that you guide them into jobs that are meaningful and that are helpful, oh Lord. Help us, God, to do your will, Lord. And we pray for peace of mind, Lord, for those who are challenged by uh, the stress, Lord, of all the things that are happening, Lord, that you may take these burdens. And God, we pray for our country, oh Lord. Uh, you command us to pray for our leaders, Lord. So we pray for those in positions of authority who make important decisions uh, that affect our daily life, Lord. We pray for wisdom, and we pray that you work out all things for good, even these heartbreaking and challenging times that we're living in, Lord. We pray and we trust in your spirit that you may bring goodness, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we're so glad you spent time here with us worshiping God. Uh, one of the ways we respond to God is by the giving of our lives. 
We respond generously saying that God has been so good to us. He's given us his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to give us the spirit. And we respond to that goodness of the gospel. So if that's something you want to start, you can just seek God right now. If you want uh, some help in that journey, let us know. Uh, but God could change your life. Could, uh, you could experience the Holy Spirit right now. Uh, no need for me to do that, right? The Holy Spirit has his own power, and he can do that right now for you. So uh, make sure you respond in generosity to God's goodness. And like I said, if you need help, let us know. We'd love to walk with you uh, in that new journey and celebrate what God's doing with you. For those of you who are connected with Grove Church, uh, one of the ways we worship God is the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, for example, one of the things we've been doing is, what is it, 14, 15 weeks, we've been sending uh, packets to the 30 some odd children uh, of this church, and we do that with the help of our staff, and also um, the mailing out packets, which is quite an experience. We know that's important to the children, so your giving helps us to be able to minister to uh, 30 children at home every week through uh, regular mailings. So thank you for your giving to God. If you want to continue giving, you can do that online today. GroveChurchNJ.org uh, would be a way that you can respond to God and by generously worshiping Him and giving of your tithes and offerings. Also, we'd love to pray for you. Uh, if you start a new walk in Jesus or have a need of a loved one or in your own house, uh, go to GroveChurchNJ.org there and you can submit a prayer request. And we'll, me and the elders of the church People like Jared uh, will pray for you uh, as we continue to seek God together and as be a church that is scattered but united under the Godhead. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for so much for joining us. Before you go, receive this blessing. May you experience God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with you always and know that God goes before you, that God accompanies you by your side, and empowers you to do everything that he's called you to do. He's not surprised by our circumstances, nor our own challenges, but he has gained victory on the cross 2,000 years ago. Go, live into this good news. Thanks again for joining us. I hope to see you next Sunday online. God bless. of the earth. Lord, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit.